Hi, welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my video blog series about all the crafts that I do. I knit, I'm starting to weave, I'm learning to spin on a drop spindle, not that I've shown you that yet but I will. I've got some needle felting I'm going to have a try at as well um, and I sew. Um, so first of all what am I wearing? I'm wearing a Freya dress from Tilly and the Buttons book Stretch but I'm not going to show you it all now. Uh, it's going to be up on Minerva Crafts blog probably in the new year sometime. So I'll keep you posted on that one. Um, what I am here to do is show you a little bit about how I knit socks. Um, a few people have asked me about it. I spent Rhinebeck weekend, not at Rhinebeck, but teaching my stepmother how to knit socks from the toe up. She's doing hers one at a time. I've started doing mine two at a time. The reason being second sock syndrome. It's real people. So I do my toe up. I start by casting on the toes separately and I put one toe onto a stitch marker, a stitch holder rather. Then I will put those back onto a long corded uh, circular needle and knit two at a time, all the way up to the cuff. And I'll cast off using Jenny's uh, surprisingly stretchy cast off. Uh, the reason I do my socks toe up is because when I bind on, when I cast on, I find that it's a bit too tight and a bit too constrictive around the calf as I've got cycling calf, my, my muscles there are not small I mean, I'm not athletic by any stretch of the imagination but there is a marked increase between my calf and my ankle so yes I could increase stitches to go further up the calf and if I was doing longer socks I would um, but the length of sock that I like it's just at that point where the calf is starting to increase so as long as I've got a stretchy bind off I'm fine um, socks I'm working on at the moment are my improv socks. I've shown you these before. They were in the October roundup. So here they are in paint box yarn. I am making this pattern up as I go along. So I don't need to worry about copyright from any other designers. Not that I'm a designer at this point, I, I hasten to add. Um, but I do need to, to be aware that uh, if you've designed something, that's your copyright. Uh, yes, it's great if you want to put something up there free. Fantastic, more power to you. But um, I'm not going to share somebody else's counts and somebody else's patterns without their permission. Just not going to do it. So I knit um, over 68 stitches um, for all the socks I knit myself. That's because I've got size 7 UK feet. That's UK size 7 not specifically UK feet, so I'm sure there's nothing different between my feet and anybody else's. Ta -hey. So first thing that I do, once I've got my socks on the needle, is I make sure that I've not twisted my balls. I use two separate balls to knit my socks. So this was a 100 gram skein. Uh, I mean they don't come in the sort of twisty skein, that you get if you get hand irons or hanks or whatever you want to call them. I'm not fussy about the vocabulary. You know what I mean when I say a skein, even if it's actually technically a hank. You know what I'm talking about. So I will use skein and hank interchangeably, as a lot of knitters are want to do. Sorry, Socratician, I know it's one of your bugbears. Not that he's likely to be watching, but just in case. So I've split my skein into two 50 gram balls. I will have yarn left over when I finish my socks. I probably use about 50 grams in a pair of socks, not that I've weighed any recently, um, but I've, I've got plenty of yarn left over from 100 grams when I finish a pair. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knit across the front of the sock. This is the bit that is going to be going over the top of my foot. So I always have that on my first needle. Um, not for any reason other than that's what works for my brain. So I'll just knit across as normal and I will just shift around so you can see how I do that actually because I realise knitting like you're watching a mirror is probably not the easiest way for you to see what I'm doing. So here we go, let me shuffle around. I'm afraid I've broken my tripod so I can't tilt you down to show you. Okay, so this is my bedroom by the way in case you haven't noticed by the bed. Let's see, so I'm just going to knit the first three stitches and then purl one because that's the pattern I'm doing in this particular band. So knit three and then purl one. And as you can see, 
I kind of flick my stitches. Um, I'm also using higher, higher sharps for my socks. I find these the easiest for the gauge that I need for socks. So I'm just going to do it all the way across this first sock. So I'll do that and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so I now have one sock on this needle where I've just knitted the front of the foot and one sock on the cord. Now this is magic loop, so if you're familiar with magic loop this is not going to be a surprise to you. But I need to get this sock onto this empty needle without losing the bit of cord that's sticking out the side of the sock. The number of times I have just pulled the sock through and not kept an eye on this cable and lost the cable is untrue. I mean, seriously, I'm not a daft woman, but the number of times I've done that, absolutely hilarious. So, I'm going to slide the point of this needle into the stitches before I do anything else. So once this sock is on my needle, then I actually take the sock that's been just been knitted and I hold that and I pull the cord from this end keeping an eye on the sock I'm about to knit to make sure that I'm not losing my cord. So I've still got a loop coming out here. Helps me keep my front and back of my sock separate. You don't want your heel on the side of your foot, trust me. Then I'm going to slip this needle, this set of sock, not quite off the needle. As I knit, it will come off the needle. But I find it easier to manage the stitches than to manage the cord if I leave a few of them on the end of the needle as I start the next sock. The other thing that I need to be careful of is making sure that I'm knitting the second sock with the second ball of yarn. Yeah. I've not actually knitted across both socks with the same ball of yarn at all on more than one occasion. That would be silly. That would mean I'd have to tink back five times in one sock. No, of course I've not done that. So now I'm ready to knit across the front my second sock. And again, I'm using the same improvised chevrony pattern that I've used on the other sock. So I'm going to knit three, purl one, until I run out of stitches. So I'll come back to you when I'm at the end of the front of this second sock. So there we go, we now have First sock on the cable with a little loop coming out the end. Second sock on the needle. All I need to do at this point is turn. Same as you would if you're knitting flat. I'm going to put this second sock back onto the needle. So all the stitches are on there. I'm then going to take this loop at the end of my first sock and hold on to it as I push my first sock slightly further up the cord again because I don't want to lose this loop of cord so I do that before I pull the needle out of the front of the second sock ready to stitch across the sole of the second sock because I've not got to the heel turn yet so I've got about another inch and a half maybe to go before the heel turn and this is just stocking stitch so I do it the same way as I did the front just plain stocking stitch all the way across. And that's all there is to it with so knitting socks two at a time. Um, magic loop. If you've done it before for sleeves, or if you've done one at a time socks on magic loop, you'll be fine. If you've done hats on magic loop, you'll be fine. Um, I've even done jumpers where bits of it have been magic loop on the body, either because I've used too uh, long a cord 
or because the size of the jumper is just so so small that it's the only way to to get it to work on the cord that I'm using. Um, so yeah, magic looks quite quite simple. I have knitted socks on DPNs. I haven't knitted uh, both sock weight and DK socks on DPNs. Um, I'll probably continue to do DK socks on DPNs because of the thickness of the yarn, but they also knit up a lot quicker. So not so much of an issue with the whole second sock syndrome there. Um, the main DK socks I'll be knitting at the moment are the Skein Deer uh, Sock Lester uh, collection. I've knitted one pair um, so far. Uh, it's about five or maybe six in the pattern, I think, in, in the booklet. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but they're DK colour work socks, so I didn't brave doing colour work over um, Magic Loop two at a time. I might do if it was a so if it was a um, sock weight pattern, but that would mean I'd be managing at least four balls of yarn at the same time, which is a bit of a faff. Um, so colour work socks may well continue to be done on DP done on uh, Magic Loop as one at a time for the sock weight and DPNs for DK weight. Then I could do Magic Loop for DK. Uh, we'll see how I get on with colour work on, on Magic Loop. I've not done it on that s smaller circumference yet. Um, so we'll see. So yeah, feel free to comment down below with your sock adventures. Let me know how you're getting on with two at a time toe up socks. I'll show you these babies once they're done. I might even show you when, you get, when, you get, when I get to the heel. I'm going to be trying the um, Eye of Partridge heel, which I've not done before. So that'll be interesting. Um, and I'll show you when they're finished. Um, at some point I will show you how to do the Vickle braid that I'm putting over my textured, oh, well, either side of my textured bands, it's probably easy to see it there. Um, I just have to work out how to do that in the round when I'm doing two at a time socks. Uh, for once I get onto the leg, because I'll be doing the pattern the whole way round once I get onto the leg of the sock. Um, so yeah, like and subscribe down below. Um, hop on over to the usou.com blog where I've just posted um, about my <laughs> Christmas crafting projects and lack of organisation therein. Um, oh, I will get out of the needle felting at some point and show you that as well. Looking forward to that. It's going to be good for stress relief. It's basically stabbing stuff. And I'll see you next time. So until then, bye-bye.